Good morning. I wanted to talk to you today about the actual preparation for and how to answer certain types of questions in depositions. You've already seen the first deposition uh, video that I've done, which basically was the overall uh, what to expect in the deposition. This video is designed for you to be able to understand what I mean by short and concise answers. Okay, this is this is really important because a lot of my clients, unfortunately, feel like they have they have to tell their whole story. And I just want to reiterate that you do not do that at the time of the deposition. I know you'll want to explain it. No reason for explanation. If there's something that you and I need to talk about during the course of the deposition about a question that's been asked, that's fine. You All you have to do is answer the question in a short answer and then say, may I speak with my attorney? You and I can then step out of the room, discuss what you need to explain, and I'll either have to say, yeah, that's very important, or you know what, you don't need to explain that. That's not what they're looking for. It's basic information. This is where we're going. So stay with the short answers, okay? But I want you to know there are certain ways to handle most questions because this is the type of questions. I've been doing this for 40 years, 42 years. And I've taken a lot of depositions and I've sat in on a lot of depositions. So I know pretty much what they're going to ask. And nothing is truly a surprise to me, but it is maybe to you. So I'm gonna give you some of that experience in a real nutshell little lecture here on this video so that you can kind of get an idea about how the best way to answer the questions. Most questions can be asked, answered, excuse me, with one or two answers, one or two word answers, like yes or no. If they want more information than that, okay? If the defense wants more information, then your yes or your no, they'll ask another question. You don't have to fill up empty space. Just because you've answered it and it seems like, wow, that was a quick answer, most of your answers probably are going to be quick. Okay, so yes or no are perfect answers. If they want more, they'll ask more. Another type of example of short answers is, and we covered, covered this a little bit before, which is, I don't remember. You're gonna forget things. You're gonna probably forget the first supervisor's name that you had. Um, you know, you're gonna forget things that, oh my gosh, I should know. And I remembered them, but I've forgotten them. And it's okay. You're not charged with having a perfect memory. No one is, okay? So don't worry about that. Just say, I don't remember if you don't know. And as we told you before, if you do know, or if you do remember, of course, you've gotta cooperate, give the correct, honest answer. Third kind of example, is I don't know, meaning I never knew it. And the example that I use is, what's the name of the guy who owns the most stock in your company? I have no idea, nobody told me that. So there'll be lots of, info, not lots, there'll be several questions that you just don't know the answer to at all, okay? A fourth example is of, of, of a short answer is this. <clears throat> you know, I don't wanna guess because my attorney's told me not to guess and the attorney that's gonna take the deposition will tell you don't guess because he doesn't want guesses, he wants answers. But if you don't have a perfectly clear answer in your head, but you remember most of it, you can give what we call estimates. And an estimate is based upon something that you knew or were, are currently aware of, but maybe you don't have all the details, like how long is the, the table that you work at at work? Well, you don't know exactly how long it is, but you work there for four years or two years or whatever it is, and you can say it's four feet, two inches, or it's five feet, or I don't know, it's three and a half feet. That's an estimate. It's not accurate because you never got a tape measure out, but you can kind of tell, yeah, it's about three to four or five feet, whatever it is, that's your estimate. And they're entitled to an estimate. But if I ask you how long is the table that I'm sitting at right now, and since you've never been here to measure that table, if you guessed it three feet, four feet, five feet, 25 feet, it would all be wrong because it isn't based on anything. It's a flat out guess and no one wants you to guess. And then the last example is this. Very simple, attorneys talk in weird language. I totally understand that, I don't have, I'm not offended by that. My wife of 47 years has told me, Roger, quit talking like an attorney, just talk normal. And sometimes all of us, all attorneys, kind of go off on this strange tangent for the rest of humanity. That may happen during the deposition, hopefully not for me, but it might happen with the other side. And when that happens and you don't understand what he's talking about, it has nothing to do with your education or your vocabulary, has everything to do with how he's asked the question or she. 
So what you answer is this. Could you please repeat? I didn't quite understand. That's code for all attorneys to know, oops, I've talked in legalese. They don't have a clue what I'm asking. And trust me, they're not there to confuse you or lead you down the wrong path. They want to know. So they'll rephrase the question so that it's clear. And my instruction to you is be confident to say, I didn't understand the question. Could you please repeat? Or also to say, <clears throat> don't answer anything that you don't understand. Okay? Because we're not here to test anybody's vocabulary. We're only here to get information. And if you don't understand it, then by George, it's very important that we get a clear question so that you can answer it honestly and help everybody that's involved in the case. So hopefully this has been helpful. We'll see you in the deposition in a few days. Um, and we'll talk more at that point. Thanks a lot.